We've been talking about working with God. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Your life is not an idol. You are to work with God in what he's working on in your life. Amen. Does anybody remember? I know I'm supposed to preach, but you know I'm teaching a little bit at the same time. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember what it is that God's working on in the earth? Us. Hold on, before you get there. What what is what is the institution he's working on? Because we like to skip that. God said, I will build my church. Right? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Amen. So what is God working on? The church. He's working on building his church. Now if you just jump to you. That will mess you up because you'll start thinking that God is working on everything that you're working on. Mm -hmm. And you'll start praying prayers where you just ask God to bless what you're doing. And you'll not realize that you need to start doing what God is blessing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. Because we could be doing a whole lot of stuff, but it ain't what God is doing. The Bible right. says that lets the Lord build the house. Mm -hmm. Those who labor. It's in vain. Laboring in vain. Yes. And a lot of times, a lot of what we're doing in life is in vain. Wow. That's right. It's in vain. ain't going to do us no good. That's right. Neither in the short run or the long run. Amen. Because the Bible says that godliness has promise in this life yes. and the life to come. Mm -hmm. You see, when you live right, when you live right, you get blessed not only when you get to heaven. Mm -hmm. But you also get blessed while you're yet here on earth. Amen. Amen. Because God's design is that you experience a piece of heaven while you're still here on earth. Amen. Amen. That's why he taught us to pray, our Father which art in heaven. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's right. You see, we're supposed to be getting some of that heaven while we're still here on earth. Amen. You ain't got to wait to get all of it. <laughs> all of it ain't stored up. The Eden experience is for you. Amen. When God created Eden, it was heaven on earth. Yes. Yes. Is that right? Yes. It was a habitation for God. What you got, sister? Well, we got to be part of the house. We get that. That's right. Okay. Amen. Yeah. It was a habitation for God. And she's absolutely right. And so what God is doing, if you look in Genesis, he established Eden. If you look in Revelation, Eden gets expanded. Yeah. All he did was, was take us back to what he originally intended. God don't change his mind about nothing. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. We change our mind. That's right. Yeah. We act funny. We flip. We do all kinds of stuff. Amen. But God don't change his. Sister Keila, I just know something different. I don't know what it is. I just told my, my wife over there, I said, something different about this. There's a humility on you now that wasn't there before. God's going to elevate you. God's going to humble yourself. I don't know what it is, but there's a humility now. Amen. And God, God's going to use that. Amen. But God doesn't change his mind about you. Regardless of what you do, you can take detours and U-turns. Whenever you get saved, all you're doing is getting back in line, getting back in step with God's original plan. Amen. Amen. When you backside and repent, all you're doing is getting right back on the same track that you was on before when you was doing good. Come on, come on. There's not a new path that's made for you. The path is already there. That's right. He predestined it. The Bible says that he had good works for you to do before he formed the earth. Amen. That's right. Check out the features. Before the foundation of the world, Come on. he had already prepared some good stuff for you. Amen. Amen. Some Amen. good stuff for you to do. Some good stuff for you to enjoy. Amen. The Bible says he gives us all good things to enjoy. Yes. Wow. Did you know that? Amen. Did you know that? Yes. Did you know that everything in your life you're supposed to enjoy? enjoy. Yes. Lord have mercy. That's why you got to get your pillars right. Because when your mind ain't right, when your relationships ain't right, huh? when you don't know how to operate right, 
When your spirit ain't right, when your body ain't right, when your money ain't right, huh? Mm -hmm. And you don't know how to rest and recreate right, you can't enjoy nothing. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money and not enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You can have a lot of family and friends and not enjoy them. You can have the facilities of your mind and not control your mind, and your mind wander all kinds of places and take you where you don't want to go. That's Amen. right. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Yes. And so what we want to do, what you got to understand is when you got saved, it wasn't just spiritual. There was supposed to be a physical manifestation. Yeah. Something was supposed to change in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And not yeah. only begin to change, because being born again is just a beginning. Yes. yes. It was supposed to continue the change. Amen. You're supposed to be going from glory to glory. Amen. Somebody say from glory to glory. From glory, glory to glory. glory. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about the angels and how they're, the stars are oftentimes related to the angel because they're considered the luminaries. They shine. In the original Hebrew, the angels are called the shining ones. Okay. They're called the shining ones. But now, we are supposed to shine as well. Mm. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But before he left, he designated us, he delegated, he deputized us and said, now you're the light of the world. Amen. Yeah. Because I'm going to shine through you. Amen. 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 Yes. You see? And so there's a level of glory that you are supposed to carry. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that we are priests. We are kings and priests in the house of God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's relating us back to Israel as the example of what we are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be a nation of kings and priests, right? They're supposed to carry the glory of God. The priests literally used to carry the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. Amen. Okay, and it gave them a certain power that they didn't have in and of themselves. Yes. As a matter of fact, while they carried the Ark of the Covenant, when they stepped into the Jordan River, Come on. carrying the Ark of the Covenant, Jordan River opened up for them. Mm -hmm. yes. It didn't open up for them just because they walked through. They opened up for them because they were carrying so, the glory. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you understand? Amen. So when you, there's a, there's a glory, you might call it anointing. There's a glory that when you learn how to carry it, Things will open up for you. Amen. Yes. There's a glory that when you learn how to build your pillars, you can hold that glory. Yes. Yes. That's the purpose of your life is to hold the glory of God. Yes. That's why you got to get your pillars right. There's seven pillars. Wisdom has built her seven pillars. Yes. There's seven areas of life and it spells prosper. There's a psychological area, right? That's your soul. Psyche means soul in Greek. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. The mind controls all of that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when you get saved, God's spirit gets in you. Mm -hmm. And God's spirit begins to speak to your spirit. Mm -hmm. And your spirit speaks to your mind. And now your mind manages your emotions, informs your will, and your body manifests whatever the mind says. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Amen. That's how life works. That's how God designed it. You're supposed to be living from the inside out. The problem is you never learn how to manage your mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so random thoughts, whatever pops up in there tends to manage you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Yep. The Bible says that we're supposed to be striving for mastery. Mm -hmm. Mastery of what? Mastery over our minds and over our lives. Yes. It will please God if you can master your mind. Mm -hmm. It will please God if you can master the thing that manifests everything in your life. Everything in your life has been a manifestation of what's in your mind. Do you? You expected evil, you got it. That's right. <clears throat> you started thinking about doing something wrong, you went and did it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's true. Why? Because your mind will manifest. That's right. In your life. Mm -hmm. Whatever's in your mind. Jesus said like this. He said, guard your heart. For out of your heart flow the issues of life. Amen. Right. 
The heart is the subconscious part of your mind. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to get that mind right. Or when God wants to put his glory on you, you ain't in place. Mm -hmm. You in the club when you should be in church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You in bed when you should be on the job. Mm -hmm. You ain't in place. Yeah. Nor are you capable. You see, some of us, our minds ain't stable. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not sound. Mm -hmm. You know, if you walk in the house and the floor is squeaking and it feels really bouncy, that means the floor isn't sound. That's right. It doesn't have the support under the floor that it needs to gird you up. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so if you look at somebody's life and they look sporadic and they look scattered and they all over the place, praise the Lord, Kay. Come on, man. Praise oh. God. If your life looks sporadic, unstable, then it's because there's something under your life that's missing. Amen. You're missing some support. Mm -hmm. See, if you had a sound mind, your life will reflect that. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth? Amen. If you were in your right mind, you wouldn't do some of the things that you do. Amen. You wouldn't allow to come out your mouth some of the things that come out your mouth. That's right. Amen. If you were in your right mind. Mm -hmm. But because we're not always in our right mind, and because we're lazy in our minds, mm -hmm. we'd rather have the television. Mm -hmm. Tell us a vision for our lives. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Somebody else communicating what you ought to do, what you ought to want, what you ought to go get. Amen. And instead of producing a vision out of the Spirit of God in you, mm -hmm. you allow a vision be spoon fed to you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And now, because your gates are wide open, it's going to influence your heart. Wow. Amen. Amen. And you're going to start meditating on whatever it was that you seen. Amen. Amen. That's why you got to be careful what you let in your gates. That's right. Amen. Because it will affect you. Amen. You can't watch whatever, see whatever, listen to whatever, say whatever, and do whatever, and not think it's not going to affect you. God is not mocked. Amen. That's right. You see, God set it up. He set the whole universe up in such a way. That whatsoever you sow into, that's what you're going to reap from. Mm -hmm. That's true. Whether you are consciously aware of it or not. Yeah. They say it like this, ignorance of the law is no excuse. If you speed through a 35 and you're doing 60 and the police catch you and pull you over, you can't say, oh, I didn't know. You can say it. But you're still going to get that ticket. Amen. That's right. Amen. Am I telling the truth? That's yeah. right. Because your supposedly ignorance is no excuse. God made you better than that. That's right. Amen. Your laziness is no excuse. God made you better than that. Amen. You're Amen. supposed to be striving for mastery. You're supposed to take responsibility over your mind. It's the one thing, the only thing God gave you complete control over. Wow. And some of you won't take control of. Jesus. And then want to cry about how everything else in your life is chaotic. Jesus. Amen. God don't hold you responsible for what you can't control. He holds you responsible for what you can control. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. He's not going to require anything of you that you can't do. Mm. Oh, I can't take control of my mind, Pastor. It just be all over the place. The devil is a liar. That's, right. mm. That's a lie that you have received, a stronghold that you have received in your mind. To help you stay comfortable. Yes, right. Amen. 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 The devil wants you to stay right where you are. Mm -hmm. Because he knows that if you begin to grow, you become like Jesus. Amen. And he don't want no more Jesus on his hands. Amen. Amen. You hear me? He don't need no more of that. He don't want no more light to be shining. He wants to keep things at the status quo. That's why when you start to get your life together, folks start to get upset with you. That's why when you start to get going to church and you start to act like you had good sense, Lord have mercy. Some folks didn't like it. 
Because they, they, they like the fact that they could manipulate you. They like the fact that they could look at you and feel better about themselves. Oh, yes. 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 That's all. Oh, Jesus. Oh, but that wasn't God's will for you. And so what we've learned to do since the beginning of the year is to walk in the will of God. Amen. And we learned that to walk in God's will, we have to work with God. Amen. Amen. See, everybody is under construction. But everybody ain't cooperating. Wow, amen. Some of us have half finished buildings. Because we won't cooperate with God to finish the rest. Amen. We let him take us this far, but we won't go any further. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Amen. Lord have mercy. Okay. And so we've we've taught extensively, you can go on YouTube and see the videos on the psychological pillar. We're finishing that up in Bible study this week. And everything begins with your mind. Hear me now. Before I talk about the spirit, before I talk about your money, before I talk about your relationships, before I talk about how you operate or, or what's going on in your body, before I talk about any of that, I got to help you get your mind right. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Yes. I got to help you take responsibility for your own mind. You can't blame those who hurt you that your mind ain't right. Amen. 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 That's right. That won't solve nothing. That's good. It doesn't matter how true it is. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It doesn't matter how true it is. Mm -hmm. Just because they hurt you, just because you didn't deserve it, doesn't mean that blaming them is going to get you up out of it. That's yeah. right. Amen. Wow. All right. That's true. Do you hear me? Amen. As a matter of fact, it's going to prolong your stay. Yeah. Because the chances of them coming back saying they sorry and trying to put a salve on what they on what they did are uh, slim to none. If you're gonna go on in life, you got to say, you know what? I'm gonna take responsibility for where I am yes. and where I'm going. Yes. Let me explain something to you. Yes. God don't get everything He wants. I can prove it right now. The Bible says plainly that God is God's will that all men be saved mm -hmm. and come into a knowledge of the truth. Now tell me, is everybody going to be saved? No. Mm -hmm. If everybody was going to be saved, there would never be a place called hell. That's, That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't going to be saved. Nope. God won't everybody be saved, but everybody ain't going to be saved. Amen. Why? Because God, in making us in his likeness, and in his image, had to give us free will for us to be like him. Wow. Amen. Jesus. Had to give it to us or we wouldn't be like him. Why did he put the tree in the garden? Because he had to give us a choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Had he not given us a choice, there's no way for us to be like him because he has complete autonomy. He decides what he wants and he says, let them be and it become. He has That's complete right. autonomy. Nobody influences him or makes him do anything. Come on. You see? Mm -hmm. And so he had to give you a degree of freedom. And that freedom is in your mind. That's right. Wow. Amen. You could be on the job working for the man and sitting there cussing the man out saying, I hate this job in your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. There was a story I used to like to tell about a little girl who was being defiant. She was standing up in the grocery cart. Her mama said, sit down. She didn't want to sit down, so her mama sprinkled her little thighs. You know, them little toddlers got them little fat thighs. <laughs> and so she sat down, but she was sitting there mumbling something. And her mama said, well, what, you, what, what are you doing? She said, I'm sitting down, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> you understand? She knew as a toddler that you can't control what I do on the inside. I have complete autonomy. I am complete. God made me free. I'm in control of my own mind. Now, you might make me sit down on the outside, but you can't make me do nothing on the inside that I don't want to do. Because God made us in such a way to have that freedom. That's the freedom we have. Yes. And he himself will not overrule that. Yes. He said, I stand outside the door and knock. Yes. And if you let me in. Yes. 
It ain't his choice. He said, I gave you the choice. I ain't mm -hmm. going to just kick the door in and just come do what I want to do in your life. Yes. And even when you let him in, he don't take over. That's right. Stop saying, Lord, take over. Those prayers ain't going to get you nowhere. Mm -hmm. That's just ignorance. I'm sorry. Yes. That's a baby prayer because you're in a baby stage and you don't know no better. God never designed you for him to take over. Yes, amen. He designed you to listen to his counsel. Yes, amen. Come to on. be influenced by him. Yes. And then obey and do what he say. That's amen. Right. That's right. Amen. So if you wait for God to just come in and do stuff, I hate to tell you, you're wasting your time. That's right. Amen. You know what God going to manifest? When you start making different decisions. Because he's going to follow your lead in your life. Mm -hmm. If you open the door, I'll come in and sup with you. Yes, amen. Right. Amen. Huh? I'll come in, I'll eat dinner with you, I'll come in with you, I'll talk with you, I will advise you on how to get the best out of your life. Yes, yes, amen. But if you refuse to listen, if you refuse to take responsibility and just expect me to do everything, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Yes, amen, amen. We got Christians all across America right now praying prayers for years that God would just come in and do something and work a miracle. And I've been teaching you for weeks that God doesn't want you to live by miracle. Amen. If God wants you to live by miracle, he would, every time he needed a new tree, he would jump down here and <laughs> let there be a tree mm -hmm. and make a new tree. But instead, he established seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. A principle. That's right. He don't want you to live by miracle. He wants you to live by principle. Yes, yes. Amen. And when you don't know the principle or you refuse to abide by the principle, you're still going to eat the fruit of your own ways. Yes. Amen. amen. Either way, whether you're doing good you're going to, or you do bad, you're going to eat that. Because that's the principle. So what you got to do is learn how to take advantage of the principle to make it work for you. Thank you, Melissa. To make it work for you. The problem is, very few times do you need to learn any principles in life. The Bible says, there, I said, this is how it works. Even in church, we get happy, we get glad, and we get gone. That's right. Is that right? That's mm -hmm. right. And we leave with empty heads. Mm -hmm. Our heart might be full, but our head is empty. That's oh, right. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? And you've got to learn how to apply the word of God or it won't work for you. Amen. 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 It's as simple as that. You keep stomping your toe and bumping your head and making a mess. When we don't have our psychological pillars together, we ain't got no peace. We can't seem to control our minds. Mm -hmm. We are slaves to our passions. That's true. That's true. Amen. Whatever gives us comfort is what we run to. That's right. Amen. Doesn't matter the ramifications. That's true. Is that right? Amen. And you find yourself doing stuff. I don't know why I did that. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I regret it. You can live a life without regrets if you learn how to control your mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Amen. This is not just talk. See, she had, she's prone, she was prone to panic attacks. I've been telling her for weeks, get a hold of your mind. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But see, it took God to step in and say, I got you. Mm -hmm. For her mind to believe. Mm -hmm. You see. And even though he gave her the feeling it was her mind that caused the manifestation mm -hmm. to cease the panic attack. Because once she believed it, then she could perceive the peace Amen. that comes with trusting God. Amen. Amen. Do you hear me? That's right. Amen. Once she believed, now to believe, you got to engage your mind. Mm -hmm. You can't believe nothing that you don't know. That's true. How you gonna believe something you don't know? That's right. right. You ain't been informed. You, you didn't even know that even worked like that. How you gonna believe for it? Mm -hmm. And so when she heard in her spirit, 
where her spirit spoke to her mind and heard the voice of the Lord say, I got you. Her mind regulated her breathing, slowed her pulse, and she felt an overwhelming peace. Amen. You see how that worked? That's how this thing works. Amen. God, God ain't gonna do much in your life but speak. Amen. Amen. And the mechanism he put in you, when you conform to what he's saying, mm -hmm. it's gonna be activated and start to work for you. Amen. 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 The problem is you've been conforming to what the world and the devil mm -hmm. and what your flesh and your mama and them been saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> And it ain't been gospel truth. That's right. And your mind has tried to make that work and been making a mess. Mm, that's right. Jesus. I'm telling somebody a life story right now. Yes, amen. Been making a mess. But see, that's where your redeemer comes in. We so spooky and so supernatural that we just want him to come and touch us. Yeah. Jesus said like this to the disciples, he said, how long have I been with you? Because he was rebuking them for not being able to do what he had taught them to do. Yes, right. amen. See, God don't want to keep coming in, touching you, touching you, touching you, touching you, in order for a particular area of your life to get right. Amen. He want to teach you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then he want to step back and see you do it and be proud like a daddy. Oh, that's right, amen. amen. And he look at, he's looking at the angels and he's looking at the archangels and say, look at my child. Look at that. Yes. Look at my child. I taught him good. Look at him. Look at him. That's what he wants. He don't want to have to keep coming to your rescue, jumping down there, doing stuff. Amen. That's right. He took them through the Red Sea one time. Do you hear me? He provided manna for them while they were in the wilderness. Do you know the day they stepped out the wilderness into the promised land, the man of stop. It's stopped. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I need you to take responsibility now. Yes. I need you to grow up and do something now. I need you to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spoon feed you forever. That doesn't mean we don't depend on him. We don't lean on him, but we do it in new ways. Amen. If I have to spoon feed my 18-year-old daughter, there's a problem. Yes. I shouldn't, I, I hadn't had to do that in 17 years. Amen. You know? She was able to take a little spoon by herself after a while. Take it out your hand. <laughs> Is that right? I might have had to modify the spoon and get one of them little fat spoons, but she was able to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so God will modify some things for you, but he wants you to be able to do it. Yes. Right? Amen. He wants you to speak to the mouth. Amen. She wants you to cast out that devil. Yes. 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 He wants you to command peace in your life. Yes. He wants you to speak to that storm. Yes. Yes. He wants you to do it. Yes. He wants you to walk on water. Yes. Amen. He wants you to. That's right. He don't want to be the only one walking on water. He wants you to get out the boat and walk on water too. Amen. Do you hear me? Yes. That's right. And you better get to get out the boat and walk on water too. Do you hear me? And you got to get this vision of yourself. Stop seeing yourself as some pitiful little baby that God got to run and rescue all the time because you can't do nothing for yourself. That's the way the devil wants you to see yourself. Do you hear me? That's not God's vision for you. God's vision is that you be conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. That's Amen. You don't see Christ running from the devil. Lord, help me. Help me. The devil's on my track. He pray, he seek counsel, he get up early and go talk to God. And then he come back performing yeah. miracles. <laughs> All right. yeah. And so he wants you to pray, get up early, seek counsel from God, and come back in your life and work some miracles. Amen. Yeah. 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 Because when you work the principle on the run, the fruit of working the principle will look like miracles to everybody else. Yes, Amen. yes. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. When you do it God's way, it'll look like a miracle to everybody else. Uh -huh. They'll be like, what in the world is going on? And you won't even be astounded by it because you, you would have expected it. Yes. Let me tell you something. You can predict success. You can see if somebody's going to be successful. 
If they possess certain characteristics and they're operating in certain gifts, you can tell that's going to work. Yes. And you can see when somebody got a bad attitude, they're lazy and they don't want to do what nobody tells them to do, their life ain't going to work out too well. Yeah, right. They on their way down. You can see that in teenagers, you can see it in children, you can see it in grown folk. Mm -hmm. Success and failure are predictable. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Amen. It's predictable. You spend enough time with somebody, you can tell how far they're going to go. Amen. If they stay, keep doing what they're doing. You see, some things, if you keep doing right, you're going to go far. Amen. But if you keep doing wrong, everybody can tell you ain't going too far. All right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. After you get a hold of your mind, after you get a hold of your mind, the second area that causes people the most problems in life is relationships. Mm -hmm. And not just male or female. Family, yeah. friends. Work, co-workers on the job, relationships, because wouldn't life be so nice if we didn't have to deal with all them crazy people? That's right. But see, the problem is, you one of them. And the other problem is, God didn't design you not to interact with them. As a matter of fact, we said, we discovered in the Word of God that there are 12 reasons why God put you in the godly relationships that you're in. Mm -hmm. And if the relationship don't line up with these reasons, then you need to get out that relationship. Mm -hmm. The first reason that God brings anybody in your life is for him, for him to be seen. Mm -hmm. He wants to be reflected in every relationship. He wants for you to see him in the other person. And for the other person to see him in you. That's right. That's the number one reason for every relationship. If God is not reflected in a relationship that you are in, you need to either get right or get out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you hear me? Jesus. If God is not reflected in a relationship that you are in, if you can't see and say, oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. For nothing in that relationship, you need to either get right because you're the only part of the relationship that you can control. That's right. Or you need to get out of the relationship. Amen. Because it is not of God. Don't think that people in your life, everybody who came is of God. That's right. And Jeremiah, he said, they prophesied, but I didn't send them. That's right. They went, but they weren't sent. Wow. Do you hear me? He said, they prophesied this stuff to you. They were talking talk about thus saith the Lord, and I did not send them. Yes. There's another scripture where he said they caused themselves to dream dreams. Mm. <laughs> Everybody think they heard from God just because they dreamed a dream. That dream don't mean nothing. <laughs> just because you dreamed it, it's just what you want. Mm -hmm. You see yourself with that woman's husband, that ain't no God. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. Just because you dreamed it. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. just your flesh telling you what it wants. That's right. That's all that is. Exactly. Jeez. Because you got to evaluate everything in line with the word of God. God. Yes. That's right. Is that right? That's yes. right. And so relationships are of utmost importance because God established relationships. As a matter of fact, relationship is so important that after six days of creation, man had his God, he had his job, he had his, his crib, he had Eden. Huh? Yeah. He had his animals. Mm -hmm. He had everything he needed. It was good. Mm -hmm. But God said it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. He said one thing is missing. You by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not good for you to be alone. Mm -hmm. right? You know, you know, God wants us to relate to one another because he's not always going to show up in physical form. Mm -hmm. And so it gives him joy like it gives a parent joy to see his, your kids playing together and not fighting. Amen. It gives God joy to see himself reflected in y'all and y'all relating to one another the way he intended. Amen. 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 That's what he wants for his earthly family. Amen. God has a heavenly family. Mm -hmm. And he has an earthly family. Amen. And he told the angels and he looked around and said, let's do on earth what we got up here. <laughs> let's make man in our image. Yes. And our likeness. Yes. He's going to look like us. And then God got down and made man. Mm -hmm. But after giving man everything, it wasn't enough. Mm 
Because man didn't have relationship with nobody else. You see, God gives you people. The Bible says if a man find a wife, he find a good, good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. Amen. Yes. The Lord gave you that good thing. The Bible says that children are a heritage or a gift from God. Amen. And so God gave you them children. Your sperm and your egg just don't work like that by itself. God gave you them in there. That's right. You see? Amen. Lots of people want to have babies. They have a baby. God didn't get up in there. That's right. God got to get up in there and form you in your inward parts while you're still in your mother's belly. Come on. Come on. Amen. Huh? He got to get up in there. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see? Because it's what he wants done. Amen. God wants relationship. Amen. Vicky Wines is wrong. As long as you got King Jesus, you still need somebody else. That's right. Come on. Adam had King out. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. And King Jesus said, this ain't good. Come on, come on, come on. You need somebody else in your life. Yes. Amen. I want you to be, live in community. And there's reasons why. Because you, you, can't, you can't see me through nobody else when you're just looking at me. There's some Christians who don't go to church. Why? Because they can't deal with them church folk. Mm -hmm. Right? Them church folk. Them church folk. Them church folk. They blame church folk for everything. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that that's the vehicle that God is using to bless them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let me give y'all some scripture before y'all think I'm coming down right here. <laughs> so, number one reason for all relationships that God has ordained is that he be reflected. If you're in a relationship where you can't see God, something wrong. Something wrong. Something wrong, okay? So think about that relationship where every time you talk to this person, y'all fall out, cuss, argue, and can't ever get along. And you ain't doing them no good and they ain't doing you no good, you need to get out. Get out. Do you hear me? That is not of God. Don't salvage it. Don't try to fix it. Get out. Yes. It's not of God. It's not of God. But if you can see God in that person, and that person can see something about God, an aspect of God, and praise God for something about you, well, now you got something to work with. If you can't relate to somebody, if you try to talk to them about their problems, they can never hear you, just leave that person alone. Amen. Don't go back and try to talk to them again. Mm -hmm. Don't give them no other chance. Mm -hmm. That's not of God. That's not the uh, that's not the relationship God appointed for you. Mm -hmm. You're gonna you're gonna feel isolated and you're gonna feel worse trying to talk to them. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, if there's no relation, if you can't relate, if you can't hear them and feel like they're being and feel like you're being heard by them, mm -hmm. it's not of God. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's not of God. Now, you might have to work with them. You might have to live with them. But understand that, that that relationship ain't of God, and you don't need to invest too much in it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Amen. Am I helping anybody? Yes. yes. Amen. What's the third reason God gives us a relationship? Anybody remember? Represent, relate, and... Oh, y'all didn't do your Bible study. Or you just don't remember. Those are the first two. I gave you three. And reside. Reside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Reside. That means to live together. The Bible says, oh, how good and pleasant it is for brother to dwell together. It's like the oil that went down Aaron's beard. Mm -hmm. Dripping down to his skirt tails. In other words, there's an anointing when we come together. That's why he said, if two of you touch and agree, if you come together in unity on something. You know, the Holy Ghost didn't come until they were all on one accord. That's right. Mm -hmm. He wasn't sitting the Holy Ghost for one. One of them might have been sitting there right as the day is bright. But he wasn't sitting for that one. He sent them when they got on one accord. Amen. Because that's what he wanted. He wants us to reside together. As a matter of fact, he built it so much into us for us to reside together that the worst punishment we can give to somebody is to set them away from society. When you put somebody in prison, you set them away. Now, when they get to prison, if they cut up there, act like they can't get along with nobody, then we do the worst thing that we can think of, put them in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the worst punishment we can think of for the for the people, the bad players in our society is to put them by themselves. Why? Because we're designed not to be by ourselves. The worst punishment we can think of is to isolate you. And some of y'all are so fool that you get to isolate yourself. That's right. You so crazy that you will isolate, you will punish yourself. By cutting off yourself from other people. Yes. Mm -hmm. When God wow. said in Corinthians that we have this treasure mm -hmm. in earthly yes. vessels. Mm -hmm. The way God going to bless you, typically, is through somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Somebody else going to be moved by God, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly. To do what you've been praying about. Wow. Jesus. Somebody else is going to be moved by God to open the door for you. To elevate you. Mm -hmm. To say an encouraging word to you. To be there to listen to you. Wow. Because God put it in them. Wow. He put a treasure. Woo. A glorious treasure yes. in an earthen vessel. Amen. It's like putting gold in clay, dirty clay pots. Amen. And because you got a problem with the pot, you can't get to the gold. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, because you got a problem with that's the pot, you will never get the gold. Wow. You've got to at least tolerate the pot. Wow. To get to the gold. Amen. Because he hid the gold in the pot. Wow. <laughs> he hid your blessing to somebody that you might not even like. That's right. He hid your blessing in somebody who's yes. your personality. Them, yes. But that's where God hears your blessing. Yes. And so now you got to decide yes. which is more important. Yes. Not liking them and staying away and not receiving your blessing. <laughs> or saying, you know what? If I got to be around this person and learn how to love and like this person to get my blessing, then I'm going to learn how to love this person so I can get my blessing. <laughs> the choice is yours. God ain't going to force nobody on you. He ain't going to make you like nobody, get along with nobody, anything like that. But if you don't, if you don't, there's going to be something missing in your life. Amen. 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 You better learn how to get along with people. You better learn how to, and today, this is the title of today's message. <laughs> <laughs> the title of today's message. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. The title of today's match is getting the best out of your relationships. You see, when we get a little further along in this study, I'm going to teach you how to go from your dream to your destiny. There is a biblical way, a biblical strategy, so to speak, where you go from dream to vision, from vision to goal, from goal to strategy. From strategy to tactics. And th these principles that I'm teaching you are some tactics. Mm. Okay? From tactics, you evaluate your tools and then you assign yourself tasks so as to get closer to your destiny. And as you perform those tasks, you walk in closer and closer to where God wants you to be. Amen. Mm. It's as yes. simple as that. Do you understand? Yes. We're going to get there. But right now, understand that I'm giving you principles principles of relationships today so that you can get the most out of them. Did you know that your Bible, as a matter of fact, we, we'll just go ahead and let me see if I want to turn there. Yeah, let's turn there. John 10.10. 10. Somebody give me a time check. 11.36. 11.36. I got a good 20 minutes. Let's do it. Somebody stand up and read John 10.10. 10. Tell us what version you're reading it in. And say it loud and proud like it's the word of God because it is. Come on. Participation is required of the here. This ain't no one man show. John 10.10. 10. Go ahead, Lisa. She got it. The thief comes only to mm -hmm. steal and kill mm -hmm. and destroy. That's right. I've come that they may have life. And have it to the full. Woo, what version was that? That's NIV. That's NIV. Thank you. Okay. Jesus is saying that the enemy, the devil comes, when he comes, he comes to take away from your life. He comes so that you can have a miserable. Look, the devil don't always want to kill you. 
He'd rather torture you. He'd rather take away from you and let you walk around looking pitiful and miserable and then turn to God and say, see how you like them now. He'd rather take from you and make you and deface you and take everything that looked like the image of God out of your life. You walk around looking pitiful, miserable, being in moods and having attitudes. That's exactly the way the devil wants you to look. Ooh, that's right. right. Because you look miserable and God wants you happy. Oh, yeah. He wants you to have an abundant life. He wants you to enjoy life. Yes. Jesus died not just to put you back in connection with God, but so that you can get the most out of being in connection with God. Amen. And you've got to get that in your spirit and stop settling for less. Oh. Let's just put that on pause. It's all right. Somebody read that in the in the King James version for me, if you have it. Anybody got? Go ahead. New King James. New King will work. Go ahead. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Why did Jesus come? To give you life, first of all. Now, when you're born again, you get spiritual life. Mm -hmm. But just because you're born again, don't mean you know how to live that spiritual life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us that experience that, we got saved, but then we were still stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. We got saved, but we found ourselves still doing some of the same things, and the devil would try to tell us we weren't saved. But that's a lie because once you're born, you can't be unborn. Right. Right. And you were born again. You believe God. You just ain't know no better. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And so you had life in God. But you wasn't living the abundant life. Amen. That Christ was talking about. Amen. In order to do that, you got to learn how to build these pillars we're talking about and carry some glory. Because look, you could be saved and not have your mind right. Amen. That's why people have problems with church folk because they come with the expectation that the church per person is perfect. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that everything God gives you, He will give you in seed form. Amen. Yes. Everything God gives you has to be developed. Yes. That's right. I don't care if it's a relationship. I don't care if it's an education. I don't care what gift it is. I don't care. My boy can play basketball, but he's been working on it. And now he's better than he was when he first started. Mm. Right? Why? Because he developed it. Wow. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There was a time I couldn't hardly stand before nobody and talk for five minutes because I didn't know what to say. But you know what? I knew God had put something in me and I mm -hmm. wanted to develop it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Everything God gives you is going to be in seed form. That's why he said don't despise small beginnings because every beginning I give you is going to be small. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 So that's the problem now. You're expecting something great and big and grand. Right. Not understanding how God works. Amen. He gives it to you in seed form. Everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything. And then he commissions you to develop it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how to be a wise farmer and develop what God gives you, then all you have is a bunch of weeds in your yard. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Amen. Because you don't know what to do. Jesus said, I came to give you life. And most of us, we get saved and we think, oh, we got everything I want. I got everything I needed when I got saved. That's not true, baby. Mm -hmm. That's not true. It simply isn't true. And your experience has proved that out. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? Your experience has proved that. If you didn't get everything you needed, that's why Jesus put it in two parts. He said, I came to give you life and. <laughs> Now, if, it was just, if that was all there was to it, he would have stopped right there. The period would have went right there. But there, there's a little thing called conjunction. Mm -hmm. He put a conjunction between life and that more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Why? Because just because you get born again, that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you got to learn how to live a life of abundance. Mm -hmm. Y'all ready for that? Yes. yes. Amen. Now, this ain't going to be, oh, you're going to send me some prayer cloth. With a hundred dollars, and you go in one week, get a thousand dollars back. That ain't what I'm talking about. That's that trying to live by a miracle stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. 
And I ain't saying that it don't happen every now and again, but you can't bet the farm on it. That's right. Amen. When your God has given you principles to live by. Yes. 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 Do you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Principles. That's like eating anything you want and then wondering why you fat and sick. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Because you ain't working with the way you design. I mean, designed to drink soda. They didn't even invent soda until about a hundred years ago. You drank something somebody invented in a lab. And you're killing it and won't drink one bottle of water to flush that junk out. And now you wonder why your kidneys don't work right. Mm -hmm. God ain't say nothing about no soda in that Bible. No. That's right. But the Holy Ghost used a metaphor and said, I'm like the one in life. Yes. You see? I tell you right there, you need some water. That's right. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe your back start hurt, stop hurting if you drink some water. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you won't have no kidney stones. Yes. That's right. Y'all don't want to hear this in church, do you? Yes. 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 If you want help or not. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Right. So, I'm going to tell you that God wants what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Not only does he want what's best for you, he wants something better than what you got going on right now. Amen. The Bible says, somebody turn to 1 Timothy 6, 17. Quickly, quickly, I'm running out of time. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Somebody else. Somebody who hasn't spoken yet. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Stand up loud and proud, tell us what version, and speak the word of God. 1 Timothy 6. Somebody new. NIV. 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 Um, it says, command those who are rich in this present world mm -hmm. not, be, not to be arrogant right. nor to be put their hope in wealth, which is there. so uncertain, mm -hmm. but to put their hope in God, put your hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Wait a minute. God richly provides mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. for your enjoyment. Somebody got a King James Version? Mm -hmm. Somebody got a King James Version? I like the way King James says it. 1 Timothy 6, 17, uh -huh. King James. Charge them that are rich in this world that they may be not high-minded mm -hmm. nor trust in uncertain riches, mm -hmm. but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Who giveth us like richly that. all things to enjoy. Amen. You see, part of some people's problem is they got a scarcity mentality. You think there ain't enough. You think life has to be hard. Mm -hmm. You're still living under the curse. Mm -hmm. The curse was that life would be hard for man and the earth wouldn't yield what it was supposed to yield for. Him. But now Jesus came to break the curse. Amen. So life ain't supposed to be as hard as you think it's supposed to be. Huh? As a matter of fact, you're supposed to be enjoying life. If you're a Christian, you ought to be enjoying all the good stuff God gave you rich, richly. In another version in Ephesians, it talks about how God lavishly. See, God ain't, ain't sent you. The problem is he had to hold back on you because you didn't know what to do with what he gave you. Amen. And instead of mess yourself up, he said, I'll just hold back on it. Mm -hmm. Huh? You had a hundred dollars, you smoked a hundred dollars crack. Had you had a thousand, you wouldn't be here. Oh wow. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. And God in his mercy let you do what you're gonna do and wreck your life, but not kill yourself. Amen. In his mercy. Amen. You understand? In his mercy. <laughs> you run around here worrying about, I ain't got enough, I ain't got enough, but you don't know what to do with it yet. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, the one, one reason why your prayers ain't, ask, ain't answered, because you're praying amiss. You're yes. praying so you can consume it upon your flesh. That's right. Yeah. Amen. See, so you ain't got no purpose to your prayer. That's right. Wow. wow. You got to pray with purpose. Mm -hmm. That's another sermon, but we'll get back to that one day. You got to pray with purpose when you be praying just to consume it upon your flesh and eat it on your passions. Mm 
God can't get with that. Amen. Right. Amen. You got to pray with purpose that line up with God's purpose That's so right. God can fund his agenda through your prayers. Amen. See, God's, God is working, but he, our work is to accomplish the work that he's working on. Amen. And once you realize that, God now partners with you. It don't mean that everything always goes smooth and everything works out just the way that you want. But you got God as a partner. Amen. But you got God as your partner. Amen. Do you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You ain't by yourself and you ain't got nobody weak like you. You got God Amen. as your partner. Yes. When you partner with him. Amen. Amen. I need you to get this mentality in your mind. I need you to see yourself as the kind of individual that God has handpicked to partner with him to be strong and to rule over everything that pertains to you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. How are you going to let the demons and principalities and powers that's under the throne of Jesus get you down? Wow. You already seated above them. The problem is you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. You don't know it. And when the preachers say it, you don't take it to heart. That's right. So it hasn't become part of your identity, so you're still acting weak even though you're strong. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all are stronger than you ever thought you were. Mm -hmm. You couldn't survive some of the stuff you survived if you wasn't that strong. Jesus. Jesus. That's right. But you ain't been realizing it. You hadn't contemplated it. You ain't thought about it. Some of the stuff that the devil said to take you out. Right. Come on. Uh, mm -hmm. Come on, man. That you survived. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. The fact that you survived it is proof that you're stronger than it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Because he didn't come. He didn't come just to weaken you. He yeah. came to steal and yeah. to kill yeah. and, and to destroy you. Right. And yeah. the fact yeah. that you ain't out of the picture. Right. That's right. Yeah. Says that you got some staying power. Wow. Yes. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Isaiah 119. That's the last one I'm going to have y'all read because this is going a little too slow. But somebody else, somebody who hadn't read. Isaiah 119. I want you, I got to get in your spirit what God wants for you. God wants to prosper you. He said, Beloved, above all things, I would that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. You see, the Bible says that, 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 are y'all, you need it again? It was Isaiah 119. Who got it? Somebody else. Somebody who ain't said nothing. Stand up, be a witness for your God. Come on. I have it, but I have the version that y'all have, which is the international version. Let's go with it. Come on. You said 19, right? 119. Okay. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Woo! Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Why you ain't been eating the good things of the land? Mm -hmm. Why you ain't got the good things in life that you desire in your heart that God wants you to have? Amen. I ain't talking about no silly stuff. I'm talking about the stuff God wants you to have. Why? Because you ain't been willing to. Now let me explain obedience. Obedience ain't just spiritual. Because there are some spiritual people who refuse to learn how to do stuff. There are some spiritual people who will come to church, love the Lord, speak in other tongues, fast and pray. But they won't learn how to manage their money, right? And so they're praying for money. And God telling them to go get smart with the money. Learn how to budget and manage your money. You spiritual, I love you, I really want to bless you. I want you to prosper, but your soul ain't prospered. Wow. Your spirit has prospered, but your soul ain't prospered. Oh. You see, because your spirit and your soul are separate. Yes. Yeah. That's the you can be rich in your spirit and be pitiful in your soul. That's right. Wow. Huh? Mm -hmm. There's some Holy Ghost filled, oh, precious saints of God who refuse to learn how to do things right. Amen. Wow. They won't touch a computer. Because they're scared of the computer. Mm -hmm. And God's telling them to go learn the computer. And God keep presenting problems where had they known how to work the computer, 
They will be over, able to overcome, but they won't overcome that problem because they refuse to obey God mm. and grow. Wow. But they'll come back to church and they know all these scriptures and they can pray a prayer that'll come set you on, on now. fire. <laughs> Do you understand? There's a difference. You can be saved and Holy Ghost filled, but that won't get you eating the good of the land. Right. You've got to obey in every area. Yes. I can obey in one area and be completely disobedient in another area. I'm sorry, just gonna have to wait because I, I only oh, got about ten minutes. That's good. That's good. That's good. good. Do you understand? Amen. That's why you got the master. Every area of your life. Mm. Quit playing. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Quit acting like this is a fairy tale. Like God, like Santa Claus, just gonna come and give you something that you ain't ready to handle. Mm. Right. right. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Prepare yourself. Prepare for your blessing. Mm. There's a prepared blessing for a prepared people. Ooh. Amen. And when you ain't prepared, you won't get that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my goodness. You're going to miss it. Amen. Other folk can get it, but you can't. Amen. Because you refuse to prepare. Mm. Yes. You know, when God wanted to, to bless us, he, he said, go and enlarge, enlarge your tents. Yes. Take up the stakes and make it big because I'm about to pour out a blessing. Yes. Amen. Now, had they not enlarged their tent, they couldn't receive the blessing. Mm. Do you hear me? Yes. I'll never forget, I was over in Iraq. God gave me a real life example of this. I was in logistics. And we needed some supplies. And the big C-140 or something came, and big old fat plane, and I mean, you could drive forklifts up in this plane and set down pallets, right? And it came with all supplies, and it was circling around, and we was on the radio, and we was trying to tell it to land, but they said, well, where am I gonna land, where am I gonna take it? And, and we was trying to set all that up. Come to find out, we didn't have the warehouse nor the forklift big enough to get the crates off the plane. So we couldn't receive what was right above our heads mm. because we didn't, we weren't prepared. Do you hear me? So they had to go back. We had to order the forklift and everything that we needed before we can get the water and supplies that we needed. Mm. We couldn't even get what we needed because it was on a pallet that was too big, and we didn't have a big enough forklift to handle the blessing. Mm. Can you receive what God is trying to put out in your life? Jesus. Are you really prepared for it? You won't write your name on the offering slip. How God going to bless you with a business? You got to keep up with accounts receivables and accounts payable. Huh? All your expenses and overhead. And you won't even write your name and keep track of your checkbook. But you want a business? God forbid. You make a mockery of God if he gave it to you. Yes. It wouldn't be to his glory, it'll be to his shame. Yes. Ooh. Amen. A man wouldn't give it to you. Man, sometimes you, you got to understand when man won't give you something, sometimes it's an indication that you ain't doing something right. That's right. It won't give you that long. Maybe you ain't paying your bills right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You late on every bill. All you got to do is call them up and switch the payment date. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But you won't do that. Wow. And you want somebody to loan you some money. <laughs> and you ain't paying nobody else right. I ain't gonna loan you no money. <laughs> you ain't paying them right. That's an indication of your character. You ain't gonna pay me right. That's right. That's right. Go back and make and show that you're faithful. Yes. And then you can get some more. That's yeah. right. Banks want to lend money. That's how they make money. Yes. If the bank don't lend you money, ask them why. And they'll tell you. That's true. Well, you got this, or you ain't got that, or this or the other. And then go work on that. That's right. And go back six months later. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they'll give you the money. That's Amen. right. Because they want to give it to you. That's right. Just like the bank want to give you money, God's in the blessing business. Woo! to bless you. Yes. It is to God's glory that his people are blessed. Yes. The reason he can't bless you the way he wants to bless you is because there's something wrong. Right, right. You've made yourself unblessable. Woo. And so you got to, no, 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 this is it. Look, look, look. They went into the promised land. 
There was one place God said, burn up everything. Tear it all down. Don't take nothing. The next city, I'll let you take whatever you want. They're right. Mm -hmm. They went up in there. They did what they said except for one fella. Mm -hmm. One fella ruined it for everybody. Yeah, he, right. took, he took some rugs. He took some gold. He took it back, put it up under his tent. Mm -hmm. They went to the next city. It wasn't even a challenge. They just sent a few folk. And they got their behinds whipped. And then Joshua come back crying. Oh, God. Why you let them whip our behinds? And God said, get up off your knees, boy. <laughs> There's sin in the camp. Go deal with it. Mm -hmm. See, there's a time to pray and there's a time to live by principle. Amen. You hear me? You pray about stuff that you ought to be fixing. Amen. You pray about stuff that God gave you the power to fix. Amen. You try to get God to do what He told you to do. Amen. God ain't gonna come clean your room. God supernaturally showed them what the problem was. Mm -hmm. See, when you start working by principle, it started to look like a miracle. Right. Mm -hmm. See, this thing works all the time. You just ain't been working. Mm -hmm. It works. Yeah. Yes. And so God wants you to live the abundant life. God wants you to have the best. But we don't know how to get the best out of our relationships. Anybody ever taught you how to get the best out of somebody? Mm. Not just get, the get them to do what you want them to do. I'm talking about get to experience the best with them. Huh? Some of us have kids. We don't even know what our kids do today. We don't know nothing about them. Wow. Why? Because we've been raising them, but we ain't been enjoying them. Right. That's right. Wow. Mm. We ain't been enjoying them. We don't know who they are. Right. And they resent us for it. Wow. After all the sacrifice and all the labor and all the giving, they resent you because you don't even know who they are. Right. That's right. That's right. Mm. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Yes. And because nobody told us, hold up, slow down. Yes. Enjoy your children. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're so busy raising and trying to provide for them mm -hmm. that you ain't even enjoyed the gift God gave. God said it was a gift. Why you ain't enjoying the gift? Yeah. They got personality that will make you smile. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. yes, they got something about them that will enrich your life that you didn't yes. even know you had. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got gifts and talents that might help you do some of the yeah, stuff you've been exactly. struggling, trying to do, but because you ain't looked to what you got, right. mm -hmm. what's in your hand, Moses? Come on, man. You ain't look at what you got and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're going without. When they had the answer to your problem all along. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's the way this works. God put the treasure mm -hmm. in an earthen vessel and then presented it to you. Amen. And if you ain't wise on how to get that treasure out, mm. oh, good God, your life will be poor for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, God, has just, God blessed you with these relationships. The number one thing you got to learn is you got to learn how to appreciate. Appreciate something about somebody. If you want the best out of somebody, you got to find something admirable, something that you really actually appreciate. Don't make up nothing. Don't flatter. Find something, some a quality that you really can. If you can't find no quality that you can appreciate, in, either something wrong with your eyes, huh? Something wrong with your eyes, or you don't need to be in that relationship. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Open your eyes and see something you can appreciate. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about appreciation. My dog took a class. I believe it was in music or art. Uh, art. Art appreciation. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes you don't know how to appreciate something because you don't, you ain't educated enough. You don't know how to appreciate somebody because you, you never, you never seen how that can bless you. Mm -hmm. There's a class called art appreciation. You see, when you look at a work of art, you might say, "Oh, that's pretty," 
But see, somebody who appreciates art and understands art can come and tell, talk to you about the shades and the contours, the colors and the lines, and what style this thing is painted in. The time period that was painted and what that meant to the artist at the time. And now you walk away appreciating that thing more. Right. Mm -hmm. You thought you appreciated it, but when you really got to understand it, you appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. You might think you appreciate the people in your life, but when you really get to understand them, mm -hmm. you appreciate them more. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all don't appreciate your parents because you don't know the struggle, the sacrifice of, or their story. That's Come on, right. Amen. They don't sacrifice so much because you never said, you know, what was it like for you when you was a little girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you find out that they had hell. Right. You wow. thought you was going through, but they went through to a whole nother level. That's right. And now you say, well, dang, if you went through all that and you didn't treat me the same way, now I appreciate you more for how you yeah. did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With extension cords and all kinds oh, of crazy God. rocks. If you never pulled an extension cord out on me, you got slapped in the mouth and you ain't never hit me in my mouth. Thank you. Because it could have been worse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. See, you don't appreciate it till you understand it. Right. Mm -hmm. huh? Some of your spouses, you don't appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Because you don't understand them. They're doing stuff for you all the time and you don't think nothing of it. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do that for you. They don't have to smell your sink. <laughs> they don't have to put up with you. If they got you, they can get another. That's right. right. Made it better. Oh, no. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Huh? And so the first thing to get the best out of a relationship is you got to find something you appreciate about. That's right. Look, that person that you have to live with, that you don't like, find something you appreciate, and your life will be a little better. Amen. It will. Find something about them that you appreciate, Amen. and Amen. life will be better for you. Amen. Do you hear me? Anybody Amen. ever taught you this? Amen. The next thing you've got to do, you've got to believe the best about them, even when they show you the worst. That means it doesn't mean that you don't see the worst. It means that you believe that they can do better. That's right. If you don't have this mindset that, you know what, I see something in you. I know you don't look like nothing. Mm -hmm. I know you ain't been about nothing. I know everybody else will wrote you off, but I really do see how you can do better. I can see you doing better. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to believe the best in them. Corinthians talks about love believes the best. Love believes the best. Do you hear me? And so the second thing you've got to do is you've got to believe the best about them. Mm -hmm. The third thing you've got to do is commit to them. If you are committed to them, they will feel it. They will sense it. And you will never get the, the treasure out of them. Mm. you got to be committed to them. If you are not committed, somebody need to write these down. Mm -hmm. So now, you you got people in your life, all your life, that you ain't never get the good out of. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here telling you how to get the good out of other people in your life. Where God has hidden treasure. <coughs> you think you're going to sit there and remember it all. I've been talking for two hours. <laughs> you better write. This is a teaching church. That's right. I'm trying to give you some wisdom for living. Amen. You better write this down. What's the first thing? Find something you appreciate about the person. Find something you appreciate about the person. What's the second thing? Believe the best. Believe the best about the person. Believe the best about the person. That don't mean that you, you close your eyes to the facts. That just means that you believe it that they can do better. That's right. Is that right? Because as soon as you write somebody off, your body language shows it. That is so true. You start treating them completely different and they know it. Amen. You ain't hiding nothing. That's true. They know, they know that your continence has fallen, as the Bible says. Yes. That you're not the same towards them no more. That's true. They know it. That's right. And they're going to respond in kind. Mm -hmm. You see, people respond to stimulus. Mm -hmm. Stimulus and response. And what you've got to learn how to do is start changing the stimulus mm -hmm. so you can get a better response. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to keep getting the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's why when you get with a new person and you're doing the same thing, the new person seems just like the old person. That's right. 
You're in a new relationship, but it seems like the old relationship. And you, why I keep finding me in all this? Because you're doing the same thing. That's right. You do something different, you'll get something different. That's right. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to hurry, y'all. getting agitated. I can see. All right. First of all, appreciate. Find something that you appreciate. Second of all, believe the best. You do this naturally for your friends. Did you notice that? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. huh? Your friend can say something offensive to you, and you know how they take offense. Somebody who ain't your friend say the same thing, and you mad. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. right. Yeah. Why? Because you believe the best from your friend. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, they didn't mean to hurt me. Right. They only want what's good for me. They yeah. just want me to know the truth. But now somebody who you don't like tell you the exact same thing, mm -hmm. and now you're ready to fight. That's right. That's right. Is that right? Because right. you believe that they, and you don't believe the best from them. Mm -hmm. Right? Let me tell you something about life. You get oftentimes what you expect. That's right. And so when you go to a new place, experience new people, expect the best. Mm -hmm. Don't go up in there stuff. expecting somebody to hate you. Oh, that's good. Expecting somebody to to be uh, 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 jealous of you, mm -hmm. oh, expect somebody to want to fight you, because you're going to get what you expect. That's oh, right. That's good. Expect, treat everybody like they're your friend yes. from the first moment you meet them. Mm -hmm. Like they're a long time good friend. Mm -hmm. And you'll get back what you expect. Ooh, Amen. That's good. Start to see friends everywhere. Friends, 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 friends. <laughs> you know they don't like you, but they're your friend. Yeah. All y'all friends. <laughs> And, 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 and people that would normally diss you and hate you and suffer will be drawn to you. Because you're reflecting God. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. God, the Bible says that, that God so loved the world that was against him. Mm -hmm. That even while we were sinners. Mm -hmm. The only reason we love him is because he first showed us the love. That's right. Yeah. So if you want friends, you got to show yourself. Friendly. Hello. Yes. So you got to go into it looking at the person like they're your friend. That's Ooh. right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look at them like your enemy or that's what you're you going to get an enemy back. That's yeah. right. You project the enemy, you're going to get an enemy back. That's mm -hmm. right. You project the friend, you're going to get a friend back. Yes. Oh, that's good now ain't going to happen all the time when people stupid. Yes. yes. <laughs> But most of the time, it's going to work like that, and your life is going to get better. Amen. 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 Y'all got time for just a few more? Yes. I got three more. Come on. Work with me. If you want to get the best out of other people, learn how to develop yourself. Learn how to develop yourself. James 3.16 talks about how where there's envy, Mm. There is confusion in every evil mm -hmm. work. Mm. Yes. The only reason you ever envious of anybody else is because you don't know your identity. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. If you knew how rich you were, you wouldn't be comparing yourself to nobody else. That's right. You'd be so busy doing what God called you to do, you wouldn't have time to wonder what He's doing in somebody else's life. Yes. Amen. And so when you become envious and start comparing yourself to other people, it's because you ain't busy. You are busy by me. Yes. <laughs> you need to get busy about your father's business right. and stop being a busy body in yeah. other people's business. Wow. And then you can have some joy. Amen. You can't have no joy comparing yourself to other people. That's right. You can't have no joy being envious of other people. So what you got to do is you got to be on a mission to develop you. And enjoy them along the way. Because while you looking at them, you ain't developing you. And now you off track. Mm -hmm. If you want friends, stop. See, some people just lean on other people too much because they ain't got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. You lean on people too much and you become a drag. Yes, sir. Come, on. Come on. And you don't mean no harm, but you need to get a life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people suffocate for Because they ain't got nothing going on for themselves. Right, mm -hmm. right. You need to have some plans for your life. You need to have some plans. And quit criticizing other folk plans. Amen. Getting all up in their business. Get yourself some plans. Yes. Get busy about doing what God called you to do. Amen. And your friendships will be better. Amen. 
You hear me? Amen. Your friends will appreciate you better when you got something going on. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Your friends. <coughs> now, the ones when your friends will hate you for it, but that's good. They'll help you identify. Absolutely. Absolutely. They'll help you identify who your friends who ain't. When you got somebody come along and say, hey, I'm so glad you're doing good. Girl, what you got going on? How can I help you? Mm -hmm. That's a friend. That's mm -hmm. right. Oh, you're doing so good. Praise God. All right. It, what, what, what's next? Mm -hmm. You see, that's a friend. Yeah, that's that's right. a friend. Now somebody, mm, she thinks she all that. Mm -hmm. They ain't no friend. Mm -hmm. uh, they ain't no friend. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we had appreciate, mm -hmm. believe the best, mm -hmm. commit, mm -hmm. develop yourself, mm -hmm. entertain their interests, and encourage them. Wow. You never know, somebody might expose you to something that you didn't even know you enjoyed. You got to get out yourself sometimes and entertain what somebody else is interested in. Why do they like to read that? Why do they like to watch that? What is it about it that they like? Oh, that's what you like? Oh, okay. See, some, some of us, we live with people, we don't even know what they like. We don't even know what they, or why they enjoy what they enjoy. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, TV ain't been out long. Some people sit around and watch TV, but but some people grew up ain't had no TV. So now they watch all the TV they can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and somebody like me don't understand. I'm like, you wasting time watching TV. But they ain't had no TV. Mm -hmm. Now they get to watch TV, they're going to enjoy some TV. Is that right? That's a good life for them getting to enjoy some TV. Mm -hmm. Because they ain't had no TV in their house to 1979. Mm -hmm. You see? And so, but you wouldn't know that. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know that if you don't take the time to entertain their interests. Mm -hmm. Look, when I ask you, what do you like? Or tell me something about yourself. You, man, people start running off in their mouth. Everybody loves to talk about themselves and what they're interested in. I taught a little boy how to read based on what he was interested in. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, three of them. I used to be a special needs teacher. I went and got magazines and books on what they were interested in. And do you know them children who they said couldn't read was reading by the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Without being prompted. Come to school, go right over to the little basket and love to get something because it was what they were interested in. Mm -hmm. Both had to read and stuff they had no interest in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All I had to do was give them something they was interested in and they became star readers. Mm -hmm. That's true. That on level. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah, on that was reading like they were supposed to because I gave them something they were interested in. Mm -hmm. See, some of y'all ain't got no interest. You are completely indifferent to the interests of people who are closest to you. Mm -hmm. You don't care if they do it or not. And they and they can feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes them feel isolated. Because they thought you might show some interest. Mm -hmm. And for no other reason because they interested. Mm -hmm. And that's how you show that you love them. Y'all knew this already, huh? Okay. Two more. Forget everything that offends. Look past all offenses. You hear me? The Bible says in Proverbs that it is to the glory to pass over a transgression. It's a man's glory to look over some offenses. Somebody call you out your name, do something that that you know. You can't you ain't gonna be in no good long-term relationship if you don't know how to forgive and, and, and look over some stuff. That's right. If you are nitpicky, if you are critical, every relationship is going to be sour. Yes, right. amen. If you got a whole bunch of sour relationships, check yourself. You're probably critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're making people miserable mm -hmm. because you're critical. Just keep your mouth shut. The Bible says study to be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just All you got to do is keep your mouth shut, smile, and say, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to really enjoy and get all up in it, but don't criticize it either. Who are you representing when you criticize what somebody is doing? Mm -hmm. Who are you representing? Last thing. Give into what they're growing. Give into what they're growing. You, there's never more encouragement than when you come along some, with somebody and you pull the plow with them. When you give into what they're doing. The Bible says that the liberal soul shall be made fat. Did you know that? And he that warleth shall be more than himself. Amen. Do you hear me? Yes. When you come along with somebody 
and sow into what they enjoy, sow into what they're trying to accomplish, Amen. find something good that they're doing and contribute to it, you just got a friend for life. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. You just got a partner. Because generosity leads to reciprocity. Somebody turn the phone on. Generosity leads to reciprocity. I'm going to say that one more time. Generosity you can't keep giving to nobody who got the Holy Ghost and they not want to give you something back. That's true. Now you can give to some sorry bum that just want to suck you dry. But you can't give to nobody who loves the Lord and trying to live right and keep giving to them and they not want to do nothing for you. That's right. As you give to them, it's going to prompt something in them. And they're going to want to reciprocate. That generosity. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to do something bad. And what I tell you last week, I told you that when you're in relationship with somebody and it's a right relationship, their resources become your resources. Mm -hmm. Everybody they know, mm -hmm. now you have access to. That's Just true. the other day, my, my daughter's graduated. She's applying for these scholarships and everything. Her principal asked her, she said, where do you want to go? She told her a couple of colleges that she was looking at. She said, well, I'm going to give somebody a call over here. Because I know somebody over here. See, she in right relationship with the principal. Mm -hmm. And so now, everybody the principal know and all the resources the principal has are now made available to her. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. And the same thing happens with you in all your relationships, but you ain't been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. There's people I know that you don't know that can give you what you need. Wow. There's people you know that I don't know that can give me what I need. And because I ain't in right relationship with you, because you ain't in right relationship with me, we lack that resource. Mm -hmm. You see? Amen. There used to be a thing back in the 90s in academia about, I think it was seven degrees of separation, something of that nature, where it was saying everybody in the whole world is only seven relationships from everybody else. Mm. Somebody that you know, know somebody that know somebody yeah. that know Bill Gates. Wow. Somebody that you know, know somebody that know somebody that know somebody that know Warren Buffett. Right. Do you understand? Know somebody that you know knew somebody that knew Shelly. Mm -hmm. And they told you, thank you, it's six. They told you about this resource. And now you and Shelly House getting your life together. Right. Not because you knew Shelly. Right. But you knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew Shelly. That's right. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And when you get in right relationship with them, when you get your mind right and say, you know, I'm trying to get my life together, but you know, you my friend, I'm gonna tell you, I ain't telling everybody else, but I'm really trying to get my life together. I'm trying to leave that man, I'm trying to get off these drugs, I'm trying to go get get my I need to go somewhere. And they say, you know what? I know somebody. They said something about something was starting up called a, a light on some a path or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, just come over here. Let me let me introduce <laughs> you to this person. Mm -hmm. Now their resource Lord. connects to another resource mm -hmm. that connects to just what you need. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because you decide to get right and get in right relationship. Right. See, sometimes we wanted to get right in life, but then we didn't get in relationship with nobody. They had the resources that we need. Right. There's people who want to learn the Bible, but then they don't get with nobody who know the Bible. Mm -hmm. They won't do no Bible study with nobody who know the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want that'll be embarrassing. I don't want to. Well, how you gonna learn, child? Mm -hmm. You better get with somebody who got what you need. Amen. They want to learn how to pray, but they won't tell nobody. Hey, can you pray with me? Because I need to know how to pray. Uh, uh, when, when are you available for prayer? You see? You want to learn how to pray? You get with somebody who know how that you know know how to pray. Is that right? You want to get into a business, but you don't know nobody. Go find somebody that you can develop a relationship with who's already in the business, who don't feel threatened by you. Mm -hmm. Now they can mentor you and give you some at least some tips on what not to do. People love to tell you, hey, don't do this now. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, I made that mistake. Don't do this. And that will save you four years a mistake. Do you understand? Now notice the principles that I gave you. First one, appreciate. 
Second one, believe the best. All these are in the Bible. All these I got several scriptures for. If you want them, I can give them to you. I'm just trying to run because y'all get tired. Okay. Next one is commit. After that, develop yourself. Entertain their interests. Forget everything that offends and give into what they're growing. Notice what I didn't say. I didn't say argue with folk. I didn't say be argumentative. I didn't say berate or criticize nobody. I didn't say complain about what somebody is doing. Huh? Now, most of this is what we normally do, and it ruins relationship. It ruins relationship. Well, why are you doing that? Frowned up face. Questioning like the person just got two heads and, and lost their mind. And you walk into it like that. You is the person gonna be on defense. You walk into it. Why are you doing that? That don't look right. What do you expect? You just ruined the relationship. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so true. Every time your child hear your voice, it's a criticism. Mm -hmm. You just ruined the relationship. Yes. I ain't saying you got to patricate them and baby them and, and be a people pleaser like what they were saying, but you cannot constantly berate and criticize nobody and expect them to want to deal with you. Right. Nobody. Husband, wives do it to their husbands all the time. And then wonder why the man don't even want to be in the house. Jesus. Because he don't want to be around you. Right. Nobody wants to be around that. God said I will inhabit the praises of my people. Yes, amen. If you want to get close to God, you got to start celebrating God. Mm -hmm. When you celebrate somebody, you appreciate it. Yes, amen. If you want to get close to somebody, you want to get the good that God got in your relationships, out of your relationship, you got to learn to appreciate and praise people. Quit criticizing so much. That's right, amen. amen. Quit amen. criticizing. That's Quit right. envy. That's Quit berating them. Quit judging them. Quit complaining. Talking about everything they do and how it ain't going to work. Don't nobody want to be around that. Yes. These are things that will ruin. Quit being indifferent. Somebody yeah. tell you about something they're all excited. Mm -hmm. and, oh, okay, what else? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> that is antichrist. Mm -hmm. That is antichrist. Mm -hmm. Indifference is antichrist. Mm -hmm. How do I know? Because the Bible clearly commands that you rejoice with those who rejoice. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That you right. weep with those who weep. That's right. That's right. And you indifferent to how they feel. That does not represent God. What that says is that what you feel don't matter. That's anti-grace. That's how the devil wants people to feel. And then, then that person go back and they and the, and the devil build that stronghold. See, don't nobody care about you. What you say don't matter. Next thing you know, you hear that the person killed himself. Mm -hmm. And you act like you didn't play a role, but you did. Wow. With your indifference. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. So people come to you all excited. Sometimes people stand up in church, give their testimony, and folk roll their eyes. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you sitting there looking oh. like, why? Because you know something about them that ain't right? Oh. Well, well, we know God knows something about you that ain't right either. That's right. right. Now, if, if just because I ain't got something right in my life, mean I can't stand up and praise God. They can't none of us stand up. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so now, now you gotta get with the program or or, 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 or just quit now. If you're gonna be the same, you got to celebrate. That's, That's right. right. Amen. They got them a car. You ought to celebrate like it's your car. That's, That's right. right. We've had where people testify about their children. And folks just sit there. Yeah. If it was your child. Yes. Amen. 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 They begging for prayer for their child, their lost son, their lost daughter, and you indifferent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it was your child, that's right. you would care. Yeah, right. But because they ain't yours, you don't care because you don't understand God's principle that whatsoever you do mm -hmm. to anybody else will be done in like measure back to you. Ooh. God set it up that way. So if you want somebody to encourage and appreciate what you got going on and to help pray you through, you better start praying for them. That's right. Amen. 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 Notice what I didn't say that you do. 
Anything that you do that ain't on this list of seven things that I said to get the best of somebody that you do to people in relationships, you need to stop right now. You need to repent. You need to tell them you're sorry. You need to commit to doing that. Today. Amen. Today. Because God's going to hold you responsible for it. Because he said, what's what have you done to the least of these? You've done it to me. You've done it to me. Amen. You cut somebody out, you've done it to me. Mm -hmm. You made them feel like how they feel don't matter, you've done that to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so tight to God saying, husbands, you better treat your wives right. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if you do her wrong, I'm not going to answer your prayer. That's wow. Right. That's right. If you're indifferent to her, I'm going to be indifferent to your prayer. Wow, Jesus. That's what the Bible says in the New Testament, in Peter. Mm -hmm. He said, Husband, you better be careful. You better treat that woman right. And see, some of y'all been praying and wonder why your prayers ain't answered, but you ain't been treating people right. Mm -hmm. You ain't been showing no respect. Mm -hmm. And so God will show you no respect. He said, those who lightly esteem me, I will lightly esteem. Mm -hmm. And those who highly esteem me, I will highly esteem. If you can't respect other people, you disrespect God. He said, how can you say you love me? And you can't treat your brother who you see every day, right? Yes. You disrespect your elders. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says the first commandment with a promise is honor your mother and father. That ain't just for your mother and father. That's for all your elders. You disrespect this opportunity to hear from you. And we ask, oh Lord God, that we not be foolish, that we not be unwise and walk out of here and let the enemy steal from us. Let the birds swoop down and take the word from our hearts, but that we be faithful hearers and doers of your word, that we might eat the good of the land. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up as you receive the benediction.